Welcome back everyone, I'm Robbie and I'm here doing this review solo today. The other guys haven't seen this film yet, so uh, these will be my thoughts on the latest entry in the Dragon Tattoo franchise. It's a brand new story, brand new cast, brand new director. Uh, this is The Girl in the Spider's Web and here are my thoughts. The girl who hurts men, who hurt women. I'm transferring all of your cash to your wife. He won't hurt you again. Oh, those lucky ladies. Why did you help everyone but me? The Girl in the Spider's Web was directed by Fede Alvarez and it stars Claire Foy as the title character, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, also known as Elizabeth Solander. So the film centers on uh, Claire Foy, Elizabeth, as she gets caught up in a cyber terrorism plot to get codes for missiles. That is essentially the plot. Um, very Mission Impossible, James Bond style plot almost, uh, which kind of I thought was a bit weird in a Dragon Tattoo movie, to be honest. Uh, so before I move on with the actual, my thoughts of the film, I haven't seen the original trilogy, the Millennium Trilogy that starred New Mirror Pace. I haven't read any of the books, but I have seen the 2011 David Fincher directed version, which was starring Rooney Mara and Daniel Craig. And I loved that movie. I thought it was brilliant. Uh, I regard it as one of Fincher's best films to date. And it, it, it really was a gut punch. Um, I, I really thought it was fantastic. So I, I was very much looking forward coming out of that one to seeing part two and three, completing the trilogy. And unfortunately that film didn't do well at the box office. It was very well received critically, but it didn't make the money. So Sony decided to pull the plug, reboot it, hit the reset button with everything. And here we are with a brand new Dragon Tattoo story. Uh, so this is the first film in the series, which isn't adapted from a book written by Steve Larson, who was the original Dragon Tattoo author. He unfortunately tragically passed away between the third and fourth book. Uh, so he wrote the first three, which is what the Millennium Trilogy is based on. And from then on out, it's been the, the books are being written by someone else. Uh, Steve Larson did leave notes of where he wanted the, the books to go. Um, and he left that with his family, who then hired a new author. So the girl, the spot, the girl in the spider's web is the new, is the is the first uh, book that was written by someone else, and that is what this film is based on. Uh, and so that they essentially have ditched number two and three, and have gone for this book because it is a a brand new story. So I, I don't see this as a sequel. While there is a moment when Elizabeth and Mikhail seem to know each other from the past. No event of what happened in the 2011 version are ever brought to light. So you can go into this completely blind-eyed to what happened before and you'll be fine following the story. It's, it's a brand new story. So the burning question, I guess, is how was Claire Foy as Elizabeth Solander? Uh, Claire Foy is an extremely talented actress. She was brilliant in First Man, has a very promising future ahead of her. Uh, but in this film, Claire is unfortunately wasted. Uh, her immense talent isn't given anything to do. She is left to do nothing but look moody, drive fast cars and motorbikes, and hack things. That is essentially her entire role. Um, if you remember in the, if you've seen the 2011 film and the original versions, but I'm going to just keep referring to the Rooney Mara version because that's the one I've seen. Um, you know, that character, while yes, she was a very talented hacker, that wasn't the entire film. 
there was a lot of depth to that. There was her her vengeful side against abusive men. There was her uh, her great quality where she stood up for women in need. And this film kicks off extremely promisingly with a scene like that, which is the scene you see in the trailer, where Claire Foy's Elizabeth uh, takes out her anger on an abusive man. Uh, and that's the only scene in the entire film that does that. She never once again has a scene like that in the film compared to the 2011 version where there were a, a few of them. And it's, it's a shame that you don't get to see the side of her that much because that, I think, is one of the most compelling sides of Elizabeth because she's a character who is very strong. She's a very broken down character, but she is one who fights for what she believes in. She fights for the rights of other people and she's not afraid to um, stand up for what she believes in. And unfortunately, you just don't see that side of her in, in this movie. And that is the biggest problem with this film, the screenplay. The screenplay does nothing at all here. There is very thin story. The dialogue is just extremely by the numbers. There is nothing hard hitting. There is nothing that tries to stand out. It is simply content with just being perfectly mediocre at best. And that's a shame for a film that is for a series which is known for its unrelenting brutality, its uh, unabashedly honest view of right and wrong. Um, and and the, the film, this new film doesn't seem to have the guts to go that extra step. And it just comes off as a very cheap imitation of what came before. And on top of that, Elizabeth has this, I know she's meant to be a great hacker, but she has this almost super power hacking skill, which really takes you out of the film at times, because for a movie that tries to set itself in realism, that tries to really be about reality, it really requires a lot of suspension of disbelief. It pulls a number of things where you're just like, James Bond wouldn't be able to achieve that in, in the time that she did. And the film does come off as a very mediocre, watered-down, boring version of a James Bond film. And it's just, it's missing any kind of personality, any kind of uh, hard edge that the, that the first one had. It is simply just plodding along, meandering along from beginning, middle, end, and that's it. Um, it is extremely predictable. There is no... Suspend, uh, there's no suspense at all because it is so predictable and you know in, in the first in, in the 2011 film even major characters you fear for their lives at certain moments you you don't know if they're going to make it out of their life there is never a moment in this film when the character in jeopardy were didn't go yeah you're going to die straight away you're going to live and that's exactly what happened you, you know how everything is going to turn out and for a film that should be about twists and turns that is a huge, huge downfall. Um, technically, I can't fault this film. The directing is very well done. Fetty Alvarez, I think, is a promising director going forward, uh, specifically in horrors, but he, he is a good director as a whole. I thought that Don't Breathe was an excellent movie. He did a really good job with that. And I also didn't mind his Evil Dead remake. While I'm not a fan of gory horrors, I did not mind his adaptation of that um and here again he's he is not the problem here because he is really fighting a losing battle he tries his best to elevate the material to make it look good to make it pop and it just never does because of that script the cinematography is fine it's not fine it's, it's good it's good cinematography there are some beautiful shots here there are some great uh location shots there's some amazing backdrops uh it's 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 set in in sweden and you get some great snowy vistas and it looks very, very nice. The editing, I can't fault the editing either. It, it, it's well made. Everything comes down to that screenplay, just not having anything to do for the film. Um, the, the, the music, again, it's good. 
I don't, I don't, I don't find it quite as unique as what uh, the soundtrack in the 2011 film was like, but still, it's serviceable. It's it's fine. The the music and and the editing, cinematography, directing is not the issue here, and that's the problem with this film. It is all style and no substance, and it could it could very well be an, an issue with the book. I haven't read it. Um, it is the first book not written by Steve Larson, so maybe what the author has put in there based on Steve Larson's notes isn't up to scratch. Um, or maybe that book is excellent and it's just in the translation from book to screen. Maybe that's where it went wrong. I don't know. But what I'm judging is what I'm seeing on screen and what I'm seeing on screen with this film compared to the 2011 film, this one just doesn't even come close to what that, to what made that Fincher version so good and it's really a shame it's it's a pale imitation of what came before and i don't i i have trouble looking at it as a dragon tattoo film because it, it has no feel of it it doesn't it doesn't have the atmosphere it's lacking everything except for the total character elizabeth if she wasn't in there this could be any other generic movie and it's a real shame uh it could be under any pictures i don't know maybe they just don't know what they're doing with the material who knows so the best way I can sum up this film is that it is a beautiful looking bore because there are many moments in this film where I was bored. Um, it's it's really it just it just plods along. There is no pacing to it. There is no momentum. There is nothing to drive this film forward, and there's nothing to keep you engaged either. Um, at least for me, and from what I've been seeing of the general consensus, a lot of people are feeling the same way, um, which is a real shame. So, if they're going to continue with this franchise, I hope they ditch this new path. Keep Claire Foy. I've got no problem with Claire Foy if they want to keep going with it, but bring back the hard hitting, compelling story that was the original film, or at least bring back that atmosphere, that feel of it, um, and we might have something good. But for now, for the Girl on the Spider's Web, I'm giving it two stars. Whatever she's planning, it's bigger than just you. I know what she's capable of. We're running out of time. Now the world will burn. And everyone will know. It was you who lit the match. What, you thought she didn't have a plan? Alright guys, those are my thoughts on the latest Dragon Tattoo story, The Girl on the Spider's Web. What did you think about it? Add your comments down below. Uh, did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you think it was just okay? And keep an eye out for our future reviews that are coming out. We've got Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, as well as plenty of other holiday movies that are coming out over the November, December period. Uh, until next time guys, we will see you at the movies.